you take anything else away from the conversation that we had tonight, if you're listening um, or watching, is that you need to, one, believe, you know, in yourself enough um, to be able to bet on yourself, but then you yeah. have to let let it go, let the small mm -hmm. things or the administrative things go so that you can focus on strategy and growth. <laughs> and T to Side Hustle Saturday Hustle Talks. How y'all doing today? I'm doing really good. I'm doing great. That's awesome. You know, um, I always have a story about how I come across my guests. Okay. And, um, I was doing my usual Instagram stalking and I saw this um, Shop Black City tour and I was like, ooh, because, you know, vendor events are huge. I know I'm in Columbus, Ohio and we have a vendor event every weekend and we have several, not just mm -hmm. one. And when I saw what you were doing and it was in a multi-city, uh, it was a multi-city thing. It wasn't just in your city or specific area. I needed to know more. So of course I was reaching out and I needed to know, you know, I need to know more about shop black city tour. So tell me, talk to me about shop black city tour. What is that all about? Yeah, so it's funny that you said Shop Like City Tour. It originally was Shop Like Nashville, and um, that's where we live. That's where we're from. That's where we met. That's where we started doing business, and so that's where we matriculated as entrepreneurs, I guess you would say. Yeah. Um, so we know yeah. a lot of people in the business community here, and so one of the things that we did around year four or maybe about year three into um, entrepreneurship, and we'll talk about our other business later, Mm -hmm. um, started doing vendor events and then in 2019 we rebranded as shop black nashville um, and really what we wanted to do was provide an opportunity for black owned businesses to be able to have consistent vendor events that they could go to yeah and get you know income and different type of things like that especially for brand new businesses that don't have a market yet they don't have an audience yeah and so they can come to our events and have an audience immediately um, so that was really cool. And then really prior to the pandemic, um, I'm from Indiana, New York. I went to school in DC. My wife is from Chicago. She lived mm -hmm. in Memphis. And so we basically started thinking like, I really would like a, a reason to travel and go to some different places and see, you know, what these black businesses are doing in these other cities. And so yeah. we, we had kind of somewhat mapped out that idea. Um, and then COVID hit. Right. And so in 2020, we did a whole lot of stuff in Nashville to get our name out locally. And we kind of were quietly planning for our tour that we did this year. Um, and so what we did for 2021 was a six city tour. We uh, brought Shop Black to essentially um, six different markets, uh, Charlotte, Atlanta, Memphis, Chicago, and St. Louis mm -hmm. and Nashville. Um, and so all of those cities are pretty much within like driving range and we have some kind of ties in those cities, whether it's family or friends um, or relationships that we, we come about. And so it was really cool to be able to work with some of those people that we had kind of talked about mm -hmm. uh, in, in the family realm. And then yeah, it was just a whole lot of fun to be able to put on these events in these cities and have the city really come out and support us and support these black owned businesses. Yeah. So I, I have read that, you know, before you started this, you, you two were working and then you decided I'm quit my job mm -hmm. and I'm going to start this. I'm going to go into entrepreneurship. Uh -huh. So like, what was that aha moment for you to say, you know what, I'm going to start this. We're going to do this together. We're going to start this vendor event. You know, what was it that clicked in your brain? You were like, let's, we're, this is an opportunity. Let's do this. Okay. You want me to answer? Yeah, um, go ahead. Uh, so when Greg and I met, um, I was working full time in finance as a financial analyst. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you know anything about the finance world, it's very stressful, very, uh, fast paced. Um, and it's like, a it's, it's even more, uh, of an experience when you're a black woman in corporate America. Yeah. Um, so I 
like he said earlier, we graduated from HBCUs, mm -hmm. um, and I had had built some experience in corporate America. Well, about three years ago, um, I actually started breaking out into hives, and I'll never forget this because I was so <laughs> I was so afraid. It's funny now, but I was so afraid. It just happened to me while I was at at the office one day, yeah. And it lasted for about a month or so, where I just my health was deteriorating because mm. of stress levels. Yeah. At the same time I was working in corporate America, we had actually opened a studio and we were still doing, you know, the side hustle businesses that we had. And so mm -hmm. it just became all too much. Um, and that's what my body was telling me. And so I remember mm -hmm. coming home and talking to Greg and saying, you know, I think it's time for me to go ahead and take the leap. And he was like, what are you waiting for? I told you, I told you this a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, and from that moment on, we decided to really, uh, that was the last time that I went to work. Um, and he followed soon after. Um, mm -hmm. and it's been an amazing journey ever since. What, was it hard for you to make that disconnect? Because I know like when you're in corporate America, as I still am working in, in corporate America, mm -hmm. it's was it hard for you to do that? Like, what were some of the emotions that you went through? Because, you know, going into entrepreneurship from something that is like stable, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you want to get a check. Yeah. Um, so, what was that experience like? So um, I had really done well as, a, as someone working in, in finance. So I had already at 24, 23, 24, I had already had a salary, great benefits, vacation mm -hmm. time. Um, I had built up my savings account. I was traveling. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were having a good time when we first started dating. <laughs> so that security from like just, you know, us having both of our incomes and, um, you know, the vacation time and just being able to really... Uh, spend our money the way that we wanted to. We had the opportunities at the time to like spend our money however we wanted. And so that was very, that was, that was a scary thing for me, like taking the leap, um, not only to bet on myself solely, but if you think about it, like whatever success that we have or had is solely based on what we do and the effort mm -hmm. that we put in. Um, and so with, you know, when you have a salary position or something like that, you know your role, you're, you're doing the same work, you know, you're comfortable, you've built up, you know, um, just a safety net or a safety zone. So I know for me, um, it was just difficult letting go of that, letting go of that security. What about, what about you? Yeah. I was going to say my experience is a little bit different. Um, I always knew that I was going to be going into entrepreneurship. It was just a matter of when. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Prior to taking the leap, I've worked commission-only jobs, I think maybe like two or three of them. Um, and it's really, when you think about it, it's almost similar to owning your own business. You're kind of paying for everything. Um, there's like no safety net other than me trusting my ability to do the sales. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of where I got my feet wet in like the idea of entrepreneurship prior to um, cutting hair when I was in college. <laughs> Um, and so that was kind of like the ideal situation for me. And so I was just plotting on when I could get there. And so it was just like, what is the next idea? What is the thing? And so when I met her, it was like, oh, she has this entrepreneurship spirit too. And we kind of hit it off. And um, with, when, she, when we met, she had an existing business. I didn't. And I kind of came in maybe like a year later and started yes. helping with some of the marketing. When you and... think of, um, <coughs> sorry to interrupt you, but you <laughs> just made me think about like um, everything that we do is with purpose. And we always say that like us meeting um, is divine, the way that we met and yeah. the abilities that we have that um, they're not identical, but they complement each other. Yeah. So because he had his experience with, you know, being in sales and having, you know, already been put under the pressure of producing results, he really came in and helped me with the businesses that I the businesses that I already had and we were able to work together to really um, be creative, do work on the sales and yeah. more business acumen from corporate America to really put the operations in place. Or at least the basics. We thought we knew what we were doing. 
Yeah. <laughs> we know now <laughs> that we didn't know. But <laughs> I was literally looking at her like, uh, okay. Yeah, but yeah it's funny because we both have business degrees. Yeah. Um, from Howard, her degrees from Tennessee State in business. And the thing about like the idea of the oh, side don't say hustle, in business, finance, accounting. Just to be more specific. Oh, because you know, you know, that's yeah, a little be, bit more be very specific, specific than in, the in the degree. in the school of business. <laughs> um, but it's it's more focused on how to work for somebody versus like how to run your own business. And so yes, I think yeah. I took I took an entrepreneurship course, but it was kind of like in uh, what is it called? Uh, not a main class. Oh, an elective. Elective, yeah, it was an elective. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so a lot of the things we kind of just had to learn on the go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like she was saying, but yeah. Yeah. I think there's a difference, you know, when you're working for somebody versus you got to work for yourself, there's a huge gap. And mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, people understand that. You know, you go clock in, you you have your process, you have your procedure that's already laid out for you. Right. You go through the motions, you do your eight and you hit the gate, you know, you're done. <laughs> Oh, that's my first time hearing that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when you're an entrepreneur and you have your own business, you got to do your own processes. You're accountable for your you're accountable for your own accountability. You got to build your yeah. own stuff. You got to do your own processes. You know, nobody's gonna come after you or write you up or give you a pink slip because you ain't done <laughs> because it's your business. Right. Oh, she good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned I'm, something from I'm Paul. kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> T, I know when we spoke, you had shared about Shop Black City Tour is expanding and you're going to be in more cities in 2022. Um, mm -hmm. What are some of the growing pains that you have experienced and how are you handling that? Wow, so it's, it's funny that you just mentioned um, before about just you know the thing the mindset between being an employee and uh, an entrepreneur mm -hmm. so one the the most difficult thing well i'll say two things so um the first thing is learn for us we are very like diy motivated people like mm -hmm. we we're smart um, we're cultured. We we read a lot. We we really invest in like learning. Yeah. Um, but we like to do a lot of things on our own. Um, and as an entrepreneur, what happens is you get into this cycle, or what is it like the mouse on like the little the hamster wheel, yeah yeah the hamster wheel, um, and you find yourself spending more time trying to like make a sale mm. or. Uh, we like to say get in the weeds of the yep. business yep. versus <clears throat> focusing on important things like strategy and building and building operations yeah. and then moving into my other uh second thing which is team so for <laughs> us <laughs> for us when we think about the growth of shop black city tour um the growing pains came from us having this business that kind of blew up fast in the last in the last like four or five months because beforehand greg and i were doing everything on our own the mm -hmm. marketing yeah. um running ads um the planning logistics the day of taking care of all of the vendors and this is hundreds of people that were managing and it's just him and i yeah um, and so we had to learn one how to uh, get out of the weeds right mm -hmm. with the company and, and and we're we're focused on little things like uh creating flyers in canva or something <laughs> and you know the, the things that entrepreneurs like to spend hours doing right um, and so we had to focus more on uh strategy and building relationships in the growth of the company yeah and let go and focus on building our team mm -hmm. and i think that's if, if you take anything else away from the conversation that we have tonight, if you're listening um, or watching, is that you need to, one, believe, you know, in yourself enough um, to be able to bet on yourself. But then you yeah. have to let it, let it go, let the small mm -hmm. things or the administrative things go so that you can focus on strategy and growth. And right. I think a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we struggle with that for so long that, you know, our businesses end up failing in the first 
you know, seven or eight years, which is, as we know, as far as statistics, that's what that what that's what happens, and that's why. Yeah. So one one thing I was gonna say to add to that, um, and I don't know where I heard this quote, but there's a quote that says, "You don't want to be an employee of your own business; you want to be running your business." Right. And so, like she was saying, you got to get out of the weeds. You got to, you know, hire that virtual assistant or you know, maybe it's your cousin or somebody that you know in your family that and can they're dependable, yeah. Yeah, that can take care of some of those um monotonous tasks so that you can focus on growing your business. Because mm -hmm. otherwise it won't happen. You know what I mean? You see a lot of people that I hate to use the term mom and pop shop, but like, you know, maybe it's like a, a one person show and it's always a one person show. For years. Know, and they might have their business open for a number of years. And had they maybe brought a team in, they could have maybe had 10 locations versus just the one or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. so, like she was saying, it's so huge to just let go. Um, and getting back to your question, like with 2022, um, our goal really with with how the cities came about <clears throat> and how we were able to uh, well, you gotta tell her what we thought make, at the beginning of the year what was what did we what how much did we like plan for and the growth as far as like oh yeah so like i think i think in 2020 we were doing like vendor fairs of like maybe like 50 or 60 vendors okay this year like almost every event we had had over 100. Oh, wow. so it, it was almost a double um, not only in our home city, but in these other cities. And we ended up adding Atlanta because people were like, you should add one in this city. And so we were like, it's close enough for us to be able to do it. Yeah. And as the year went on, people were like, you should add this city. You should add this city. So I just literally was like, okay, next year we got to go here, 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 here. And so we wanted to figure out a way to hit all the major cities. Um, and so she mentioned team, we're working on logistically how we're going to make that work now. But like you said, the growing pains have not been as bad as I thought they would be because of the team that we have in place now. Yeah, we've been really focusing on <coughs> the last six months of you know building our team. And just to give everybody some context, uh, this year we did six cities. Next year we plan to do... Oh, 30. And one of those will be Columbus, <laughs> Huh? Um, one of those will be Columbus, Ohio. I can't remember we talked if about it's this. Columbus I know we or, did. or Cleveland. I got to double check. I know we're we're doing two cities. It's either Columbus, Cleveland, or Cincinnati. Two out of those three. I don't remember. It should be Columbus <laughs> or Cincinnati. Okay. <laughs> so don't go to Cleveland, huh? Oh, don't go to, I don't care which two you <laughs> take. Just as long as one of the cities is it's Columbus. Cleveland. All right. But to, to piggyback on what you said about um, being in the weeds. Um, that's called a CEO mindset when you come out of the weeds. That's yes. the CEO mindset, you know. Yeah, yes. <laughs> able to sit back and let the and trust somebody to help you run the business. Mm -hmm. Like you said, like whether it's a virtual assistant, your cousin, your auntie, whoever it is, mm -hmm. you gotta have that CEO mindset because if you don't, if you always chasing the bag. Mm -hmm. Your business ain't gonna go nowhere because you're that's so the, yes needs. yes you're you're literally chasing the bag that's that's how you're gonna spend your whole career <laughs> yeah um, so yeah that I, I just wanted to yeah reiterate that yeah for sure now you also have another company called I am the list talk to me about that business um so I am the list is our uh, digital agency mm -hmm. slash consulting firm. So we started, uh, I started my entrepreneurial journey eight years, going on eight years now. And like, like Greg said, he started in college. Um, so about, how old are you? <laughs> um, uh -oh. let's, say, let's, say, let's say 12 years for so people can uh, see how long I've been in the game. We have a, we have a <laughs> inside, joke. inside joke, you know, uh, I always like to say he's older than what he really is. Um, but <laughs> I don't look it though. That's all right. That's all right. You no, bring the team. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I started my journey about eight years ago, mm -hmm. and when I first started, I remember I we had a, a online store. Mm -hmm. Um, I went and bought a camera from a pawn shop. <laughs> um, I remember it was like seventy four ninety nine. I'll never forget. 
Um, and then I put out on Instagram because Instagram was really, really new. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, I need some models. Um, and that was like my first experience of what we call today content creation, mm -hmm. right? Right. When it comes to marketing for businesses. And so over the last eight years, we have literally built up a knowledge base, a repertoire, um, an experience on creating content, um, marketing, social media, and tying everything together to create unique brand experiences. Mm -hmm. We built that, we built that bag, um, so to say, and we built so many relationships with other black owned businesses or you know black entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and what we found was that there is a gap right um when it comes to marketing overall marketing or just learning the basics about running a business mm -hmm. um, and so we wanted to provide another avenue uh to help other entrepreneurs with that yes because um it's not just about throwing a whole bunch of stuff out there on social media and calling it marketing there is a whole strategy behind yes. um, how to grow your business and make it successful. So that's where the agency comes in. So we do workshops and seminars um, and we host events um, and create digital products that are specifically for small business owners. And everything is about content when it comes to you know the digital agency. Mm -hmm. Now, did you find, um, and that's interesting that you brought that up, do you find that um, there's some education that needs to happen when for, with black owned small businesses like i see i'm in a digital uh arena mm -hmm. i do for my corporate job mm -hmm. and i found that you know when i saw a lot of these black owned small businesses yeah we know instagram and we know how to do a post on facebook but mm -hmm. do we know the strategy behind that it's more than just Throwing up a picture, do we know how to run an ad? I mean, did you did you see that there was a gap or the knowledge base was not there when it came to like black owned businesses, you know, putting themselves out there and selling their product? Yes. Yeah, I think kind of what she was saying earlier about kind of that chasing the bag thing mm -hmm. that in the black community has kind of become like synonymous with having a business. And so I think it's the, I think I think the gap falls in the sense of where a lot of black people don't know somebody that owned a business. Mm. Whereas if you're, you know, a majority in this country, I don't know what the percentage is, but I'd say a high percentage of them probably know somebody that owned a business, might have had somebody in their family that owned a business. And so it's kind of that same idea around the wealth gap in the black community. It's kind of that same idea with business, because you know, really the only way that families are building wealth in these in country in this country over generations is by owning some type of business or some type of yeah uh, something that makes money outside of just having a nine to five job. Yeah. And so I think that's really the biggest reason why there's such a huge gap in the knowledge base. But mm -hmm. um, it's also like like you were saying, like people don't um, get in that CEO mindset enough to slow down and think like, OK, I need to make this last for future generations or, you know, whatever it is. Maybe it's even just something as simple as starting with a business plan. Yeah. Um, and so really kind of the idea and Shop Like City Tour really came as, um, came to fruition as being part of us trying to help other businesses. Um, we've really kind of just gotten into that, that, that avenue of, mm -hmm. we want to pass on the knowledge that we've learned because there's so many things that we didn't know at the beginning and so many things that if people knew they could you know drive a little straighter on the road pass up some potholes all kinds of different things related to that and get to where they're going okay faster. metaphor yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so just to add to that um one like just the ceo mindset so mm -hmm. a lot of times what 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 i found from the research of like we spend so much time with black owned businesses businesses and their owners and entrepreneurs a lot of the times business, black owned businesses are failing in core um, areas like operations, marketing, customer mm -hmm. service. Yeah. They haven't uh, caught up with the technology or the digital age um, and they don't have the proper staffing. So those are those are some of the key um, 
areas that we are focusing on. And like you said, with identifying the gap, um, in conjunction with Shot Black City Tour, we are rolling out something called Shot Black University. Mm. And and with Shot Black University, it's going to be an ongoing learning um, resource for Black entrepreneurs to, to focus on those areas. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I wanted to say was, you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. Um, and I know, that might not make sense <laughs> <laughs> to people that are listening, but a lot of times I found with conversation and research, um, you know, with entrepreneurs, Black entrepreneurs specifically, they have no idea that mm -hmm. there is a gap of knowledge. Yeah. Um, they have no idea that there are resources out there that they can use that are free. Mm -hmm. um, they have no idea about things like the, uh, you know, Entrepreneur Center or, you know, the small business centers that are local to different cities. So yeah. there's what what our job is and what we feel our purpose is, is to make that connection. Right. Build that bridge. So. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, like you said, would, if you don't know, ask, raise a hand, you know, mm -hmm. you didn't come out. I always say you didn't come out the womb and knew what you was doing. You had right. to learn. And the trait of a successful entrepreneur is they take time to grow, evolve and learn. They are constantly learning. They are constantly being educated. Yes. Constantly you, just, you just reminded me. No, the thing that I wanted to mention was um, mm -hmm. a lot of times, well, as entrepreneurs, I didn't get a business coach or a mentor until year three or four. Yeah. Uh, so we don't ask for help, but we don't also go and look for mentors and business coaches. Yeah. And that is so important to have. So I really wanted to add that because um, those things really made a difference in our businesses. If mm -hmm. you want to make six figures, seven, second, seven figures a year, or actually mm -hmm. build generational wealth, you need someone who's done those things or can uh, teach you how to get there in a yeah. way that you understand. You can't yeah. just pull it from, you know, your mind. I don't know. I don't know why we're like that. I don't know what, what that is about, you know, us as a people, but it's yeah. hard for us to ask for help. I, I don't know either, but, you know, I think... I think that's shifting. You know, I think that um, with everything that's happening and with everything that has happened, I think that type of mindset, it hasn't had, it's not going to happen overnight, but I think that, that, that mindset is um, shifting to where like, you know, shopping black and, you know, having your own uh, business is more of a movement than a to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I and I think that now people are like, oh yeah, you know, black owned businesses. It's it's out there, it's prevalent, you know, before it's like mm -hmm. mm, it's a black owned business. I, I wonder, I was actually just thinking like what the percentage is of like black owned businesses now. Like, are we at like the highest point we've ever been in history, or was it mm -hmm. higher in the 60s or maybe in the 50s? I'm yeah. percentage wise, maybe per capita, but like mm -hmm. I think along with the fact that there are so many wealthy black people that are visible in yeah. uh, an artist standpoint or in um you know tv film athletics business like there's so many people now to where when i was a kid i don't feel like there was as many but there also wasn't necessarily social media where you could easily find these people yes um, but it's like representation right if people are looking and they say well this person looks like me and they did it yeah. And then there's Absolutely. 25 other thousand people behind them also doing it. It's like, oh, this is starting to become real. Mm -hmm. So a lot more people are going for their dreams. And so I think that, like, this was something that we said earlier this year, people in general get stopped from going for what they want because things in life will, you know, derail them or make them feel like it's not possible. And it's really only a mindset that's going to change that. Like mm -hmm. nothing else. Like nothing that happens to people stops them from being able to start a business. It's really a mindset thing. Like if you if you hear some of these stories of people that have like made millions of where they were before that, yeah, you'd be like, how? I'm, I'm <laughs> complaining about you know this little thing that I have, and it's like it's just a mindset thing. It is. It is. I think 
uh, it's like the untangible is now the tangible, you know, mm -hmm. and that, you know, like you said, if they can do it, I can do it. I just need the necessary tools. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. That's it. That's so, okay. So now you got two businesses, you're juggling two businesses. Now, what are some of the things that you do as entrepreneurs to keep both businesses going and have time for yourselves? All right. So <laughs> this is actually something that um, we both. So it's, so there is this is layered because we're a couple. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is <laughs> um, so as the CEO or the person that focuses really on like building the team and the culture, mm -hmm. I feel like I was really tasked with finding a way for us to stay on one accord. Yeah. So I introduced um, an app called Asana that we use um, that is for yeah. businesses. Yeah, and it's great. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really, it really helps us stay together. So productivity and, yeah, productivity app. Mm -hmm. It really helps us stay, stay focused as a team. Um, but then some of the other things that we do um, as a couple and business partner is we schedule um, meetings, for, we schedule internal strategy meetings. Mm -hmm. um, we schedule one-on-ones with our freelancers and our team members um, mm -hmm. each week. Um, and we, I think the biggest thing for us to stay on track is, um, I would say we have constant conversations about our goals. Mm -hmm. So the, when you think about, um, uh, success from what our definition definition is mm -hmm. so we want to what people call early retired so my mentor retired at 41 um my goal is to retire by 35 greg might have a, a similar age or maybe earlier um but for us we have we we're trying to learn how to manage spending more of our time strategizing because that is the secret that most ceos um hold to themselves that they spend majority of their time strategizing coming up with new ideas and making uh focusing on the growth of the company um and so we now are in the phase where we are focusing on offshooting things that aren't going to help us strategize or build our network to our team um and then that's giving us our time back so instead of us um, spending all, you know, the whole day in the weeds, mm -hmm. um, stressed out and overwhelmed because that's so easy. That's so easy to happen. I know for me, I, I struggle. Um, I struggle with like not time management, but I'm a workaholic. Yeah, yes, me yes. too. Uh, yeah. I threw you under the bus. Uh, but we're both workaholics. So what we are learning now as a I, wait, I was going to say newlywed, but somebody said we're not newlywed anymore. anymore. But we're three years old. <laughs> um, <laughs> so as a couple that's married and and we're entrepreneurs, um, mm -hmm. we're really focusing on spending our time, spending the best use of our mm -hmm. time, figuring out what the best use of our time is mm -hmm. so that we can maintain a healthy work-life balance. Yeah. yeah. Getting back to also, she she talked a lot about like the life balance, and I think that um, I have a funny Facebook status that I shared yesterday. Um, but uh, when you were talking about like the work balance, juggling two businesses, that kind of resonated with me because I just thought about it when we when we when Shop Black blew up, we actually like slowed down. I am the list with taking on new customers. Yeah. So we kind of had to, and this is something that I don't know that we talk about enough, but we had to literally like put this not on hold because we have like ongoing clients that we had to do work for every month. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as like taking on new clients and that type of thing, we had to like slow the growth to literally pause. And then this other thing needed to take off and it became what it is of itself um, so that we could come back and focus on this. Because the thing about having a business and especially in a consulting type business mm -hmm. i'm i'm somewhat trading my time for money right and yeah. so when i have less time i have less time to trade for money and so i needed another avenue which is where shop black came from to yeah. where 
we're making a lot of money by just putting this out here. And then I'm able to now step back and say, okay, now I can trade my time to get back into helping people one-on-one, -on -one, which is really like what she said, what we're passionate about. Yeah. To be able to get in there and, and figure out how we can help you, you know, get to our level and above and, and help our people continue to grow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and she talked a lot about um, the life balance. And I think it's funny you said it's layered because being a married couple is, it's awesome. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. And it's so funny. No, stop acting like I'm surprised. <laughs> no, it's, it's so funny because <laughs> it's very difficult to sometimes separate our, our personal and business life. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we have to like, somewhat turn your business brain off and then remember like how much we like each other and how much we like having fun outside of business because we could have just been having a heated debate about something that we didn't agree on in business but have nothing to do with our personal life and it's like so you have to remove our yeah from it. and so we've we've literally been learning and i say we're not perfect at it um but i was just hearing something you're supposed to speak things into existence so i'm getting there um but <laughs> but i think that it's it's been it's been really cool to be able to grow and share not only like in the business with somebody, but also like the growth of what we're doing for our family and future generations. Yeah. 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 It, it, I, you know, yeah. you have an interesting dynamic. I, um, I did a poll um, on my page and I was like, you know, mm -hmm. who would you go into business with? You know, a friend, a family member. And I said, neither, because I love my sanity. So, <laughs> so it's an interesting dynamic when you have two people who are dynamic and they're running a business, but they're also married. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's an interesting, you know, thing to think about. Like if you're going into business with a spouse, how does that work out? How do you juggle a business mm -hmm. and juggle your marriage at the same time? Mm -hmm. Right. See, that's another. That's another segue. That's another episode. Yeah, yeah it's, a whole episode. Episode. it's an ongoing um, journey. It really is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would, I would wish it on everybody, though. You would, or you would not? I would. You would. Yeah. See, I just, I just developed a new business venture for you two. Um, <laughs> Partners in business and partners in life. There you go. There's a book. There's your <laughs> ebook. Right. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so the um the shop black and the shop local has always been around and now it's become more than doing it, it's a movement, right? Mm -hmm. What is some advice that you could give other entrepreneurs about supporting one another? Wow. That's a yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny, and I actually kind of forgot about this, but unfortunately, it took the death of George Floyd for this to kind of blow up, and yeah. I forgot about the timing of it. Um, not when he passed away, but it was, was it the trial? or It was like when some of the videos started to come out and start the riots started to happen. It wasn't like immediately after he passed away, and I, I can't remember what month it was, but we literally had an event, and people from a celebrity perspective, started talking about it. I remember like uh, Young Jeezy, um, yeah. Lucy, there was a couple other people, Dave Chappelle, that like literally started going out there. Like the only way we're gonna be able to change this is by spending money with people that look like us so that we can have enough money and enough people in power to yeah. make some of these changes to laws and whatever else is going on. Mm -hmm. And so we literally kind of rode that way. That's one of the reasons why Shop Black blew up how it did. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'll admit that. And I think that it was a blessing not only for us but for the businesses that you know benefited off that too but advice that i would say to black businesses like i was saying earlier i don't know what the percentage is but this is the time to do it because there are people there are a lot a lot a lot of people not only black people that are specifically supporting black owned businesses for no other reason than that they're black yeah um mm -hmm. so that's the first thing and then if you look at like the inventions of the 21st century, the 20th century, like we're dope. We create the most amazing stuff. And so why would you not shop with us? You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. I would say it's so funny because um, this conversation came up on social media today, but uh, 
I think one of the things, I believe one of the things that we need to work on as a community when it comes to support of one another is being less critical mm-hmm. uh, and more vocal about how to help each other. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, people will write, they'll give you a low a low rating or they'll complain about your business to other people. Mm-hmm. Um, or one of the things that came came up was like, you know, why do you shop at somewhere like Fashion Nova versus um, a small business, you know, online boutique? And a lot of the things that came up were like, the pricing's too high. You can't depend on, you know, a, a black small business, a black on small business to send when they say they're going to ship the item. Yeah. Um, all of these negative stigmas that are coming from our people about our businesses um, just shows there's a disconnect with uh, how we view it's, it's ourselves. Like, uh, it's like when you was a kid and your mama said, what happens in this house stays in this house. <laughs> right. But we are going putting our whole family on blast for what reason? Yeah, and we're not helping each other <laughs> at all. Yeah, and so I, I, I hope that you know, with Shop Black City Tour and the other business ventures that we have, that we become an inspiration to other business owners to support uh, other Black-owned businesses in that way. Like, don't mm-hmm. just complain about a business. Send them a note. Uh, go up there and talk to the owner and and say, hey. Um, this is my experience with customer service. This is how to improve it. Um, I think those things would really help us as a community. And there are other things, but that really just, that's in my soul that's right good. now. Like glass <laughs> half full versus glass half empty. Yeah. Right? Right. How, can I, how can I help this person versus how do I tear them down, right? Exactly. A, a low rating on Google, a business might have 10, 10 people that rated them and you low rate them just because you're having a bad day, but that might destroy their reputation for the next couple of months. Yeah. Or you know what I mean? Like there's all kinds of different things that you can do besides that. So so finish this sentence for me. Entrepreneurship has taught me Uh, entrepreneurship has taught me to love myself. Okay. And believe that I deserve all of the set, the success that I am going to receive. So, and just to go deeper into that, um, when I first became an entrepreneur, and even up until recently, and still sometimes I struggle with something called the imposter syndrome. And that's really to just sum it up. It's it's just having a bunch of self doubt and not feeling like you are worthy of success, happiness, family, love, whatever it is that you may want. Um, and and the imposter syndrome stems for, from all types of things. And I think a lot of us struggle with that as, you know, Black women, um, Black men, just our culture, um, because we're conditioned not to love ourselves or um, feel that we have something valuable to give to the world. So my journey as an entrepreneur has really forced me to like dig in and do like self-reflection and personal development and build my faith and my confidence. And it's not for the weak hearted. So (laughs) it's not. Um, And but again, I wish this on everybody. So that I mean, that's what entrepreneurship has taught me to really believe in myself. And what I'm doing. You better drop them gems, girl. (laughs) (laughs) You better drop all those gems. I I don't don't know what I can add to that. I think that (laughs) along with what she said, um, it's definitely taught me, like she said, how to how to learn on the fly, how to how to make stuff happen. I don't know Mm -hmm. if we're supposed to be cussing, but you know what I want to use. Um, (laughs) but yeah, how to just make stuff happen. I think that. Um, I kind of always had that idea, but I never was able to really see it come to fruition because there's always like rules. Mm-hmm. Like think about when you have a job, you can't just like 
go tell the CEO what to do. <laughs> but, <laughs> I think this would be a good idea. You know, it's, it's taught me that that my ideas are are good ideas and to go for the stuff that I believe in. And it's taught me uh, an unbelievable peace of mind um, around uh, choosing my destiny, right? Like I'm in complete control of what happens to my businesses and my future businesses because nobody else is, right? Other than God. Right. But you know what I mean? I think that, um, yeah, in general, entrepreneurship has taught me a lot of stuff. And you, you touched on it and everything. So, yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's deeper for us because, again, we're married. So, entrepreneurship has taught us how to be a better couple. It's taught me how to be a better wife. Um, it's taught me how to listen and communicate. And so it, for us, we're building something that's going to last way beyond our years here. And entrepreneurship is helping us accomplish that. So, Well, you know, you guys, I'm so glad we were able to connect. I, and I, I just want to say thank you so much for being a guest on my show. Actually, you're my last interview. <laughs> Oh, wow. Thank you so much for having us. For 2021. And, you know, I just want to thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate you guys being on the show. I know you two are super busy. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to share about what Shop Black City is all about. And, you know, and, and dropping some gems today because it, it was just an amazing and amazing interview. But I want you to tell the people, how can they get in contact with you? Well, um, okay, so it's on our shirt, Shop Black City Tour. We <laughs> make everything as easy as possible. So shopblackcitytour.com, Shop Black City Tour on Instagram, Shop Black City Tour on Facebook. Um, if you type it in Google, you're going to get all kinds of different stuff. You might be able to see some photos, some videos. Mm -hmm. um, and I am the list is exactly the same. It is I like the eyeball, but spelled the letter I A M T H E L I S T. Um, and so that idea came like I am the list. Like you know, you go into the club. Like, are you on the list? No, I, I am I the am list. The list. <laughs> so, no, what do you bring to the table? I am the table. You know <laughs> So yeah, that is um, same thing for our, our digital agency. So I am the list.com, I am the list on Instagram, I am the list on Facebook. Um, and personally, my name is Greg Westbrook and my wife T Westbrook. And so our Instagram is I am Greg Westbrook and I am T Westbrook. Um, I'm trying to think where else you can find us. That's it. If you type in Greg or T. Westbrook or Shot Black City Tour or any of I'm, those I'm things. I'm Googleable now. Yeah, it'll come <laughs> up. We, we, we're building that, that personal brand and all of that. So I'll be sure to put all your details in the description below so people can reach out to you. And I, once again, thank you so much for being on the show. And as for me, Side Hustle Saturday Community, y'all know how to reach me. You know I'm on Instagram at Side Hustle underscore Saturday. I'm on Facebook at Side Hustle, Main Hustle, and I'm on YouTube, y'all, so hit a girl up. Follow me on YouTube at Side Hustle Saturday Hustle Talks. Again, Greg and T. Westbrook, thanks again for being on the show, and Side Hustle Saturday community, I will talk to you soon.